All right, here we are. Week 14. That is the week of, what, the last week of February. So that means, you know what time it is. March. It's almost here. I will have one more video before Selection Sunday, and that will be tomorrow to talk about these conference tournaments and these last bits of regular season games. There will not be, you know, a conference tournament preview. Of course, you know, I'll make one video to, you know, wrap it all up before Selection Sunday. Again, I'll make some previews for, you know, the um, each region for the tournament. So there's that. You know, as we continue to go along here, you know, throughout the throughout March Madness and stuff like that. That's, but you know, it, this week really showed us a lot, and I mean a lot, as far as the bubble goes, as far as teams getting into the tournament go, as far as where the top seeds are going to be. I mean, everything was just bizarre. And it started with Oklahoma State upsetting Texas Tech. And I was very surprised this result right here. Um, you know, and I mean, consider this the Big 12 will have seven teams in the tournament. Potentially, you know, maybe eight if TCU can get something going, but that's probably not going to happen. Uh, but yeah, seven teams in the Big 12 are going, for the, going to the tournament. There's no doubt about it now. Um, did Georgia Tech somehow, you know, beat up, you know, well, they did beat up Virginia Tech, but they got the W against Virginia Tech, and it just led to a week of bizarreness. My team of the week, obviously, is the Michigan State Spartans. Now, I do know they played a game today. I'm not sure, um, I'm not sure if they beat Maryland or not, but they have two of the biggest wins this week, and they have helped their tournament resume immensely. First, they beat Illinois, and then they beat Ohio State. I was very surprised that both of these games, Izzo has got his crew together, and they've gotten it, you know, they've gotten some of the issues fixed. I don't think they've gotten all of them fixed, but, you know, they are playing their way in to an NCAA tournament spot, which is crazy. You know, that March fever, that March madness is coming. So, teams like Michigan State need these big-time victories. You know, um, I'm not surprised that Ole Miss beat Missouri again. I'm not really surprised at all. Here, here's the real question, again, as far as seeding goes. Where do teams like Texas go? Because they sweep Kansas. Yeah, that's right first time that we've swept Kansas, but then we get swept by Texas Tech. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't believe Texas should be a 4C, but there's really not a lot of teams that, you know, off the top of my head that can p replace Texas as a 4C. Because I don't think they deserve it. I don't think they do. I really don't. You know, it's crazy stuff. Like, like Oklahoma too, they've been kind of they've been kind of iffy this year, you know. At times, you know, they lost to Kansas State, crazy stuff. And then you know, on Wednesday night, you know, Virginia just happened to lose to NC State, and then you know, on Saturday, Virginia lost to North Carolina. North Carolina, you know, another bubble team, another bubble team, you know, another team that's been projected. I believe the last projections I saw was that North Carolina was a Ted seed. Crazy stuff. Roy Williams got his 900th win at UNC. Um, crazy stuff. Crazy stuff right there. And in a battle of SEC teams, Arkansas did defeat Alabama. But it didn't matter. Alabama won the SEC regular season title. They were in the tournament no matter what at this point. I mean, it doesn't even matter if if Alabama won, you know, the SEC or not, Alabama in the, in the tournament. Um, Michigan continues to dominate. They beat up on Iowa, who, as of right now, they are, they probably have beaten Ohio State by the time this video is done and uploaded. So, there's that. Um, Michigan dominated Iowa. 
it, it was another Iowa performance where uh, I just was like, what's going on here? What is this team? Again, another team that I'm not really too sure on. You know, Iowa as well. And I'm not too sure on as to where they should be seated. I don't think, you know, they belong where they are right now. But that's okay. You know, things aren't going to really change all that much. There's two weeks left in the season. And, you know, there's some weird stuff going on. There's some weird things going on. Um... It was a non-conference game for Houston, if, if, you, if you like that. No, not at all. It's okay. Um, Houston, the last thing, you know, uh, on Houston is like, it's been a it's been a season where the Americans have been really, really down. So, there's not really a lot to talk about from Houston. But they did get another non-conference victory against a very good Western Kentucky team. You know, you know with, a, with a leading player. At Western Kentucky, I forgot his name off the top of my head right now um, because I don't watch Conference USA basketball. But yeah, Houston easily beat up on Western Kentucky. Um, then you know USC took a loss as well. And then Tennessee took another L as well on Saturday against Auburn. You know, not 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 the worst Auburn team, but a but a very tricky Auburn team. Oh yeah, here's the real kicker: Gonzaga has finished the season undefeated. I know, right? Undefeated season for the Zags, and you know it was a easy easy road to get there. And you know, if they win the West Coast Conference tournament, they'll be the number one overall seed. Baylor did indeed lose to Kansas in a, again, a head-scratching performance. I was very surprised. But again, remember, Baylor hasn't really played all that much in the past month. So, you know, things. We might not have expected a loss here, but, you know, there was going to be. I did not expect the L for Baylor this year until the national championship at least. But yeah, it happened. It happened. Um. So what about these conference tournaments that are getting started? The Big South, the America East, and the Horizon League. Um, those conference tournaments are getting started right now and are continuing throughout the week, and will continue into next week. So. Um. Yeah, there's not a lot here for me to say about those. Um, yeah, there's not a lot for me to say about those at all. Yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, so these conference tournaments they're going on right now, and yeah, these um these top seeds in these tournaments better watch out. Better watch out for these smaller conferences. These top, you know, if you're a top seed. In a turn in the in a conference tournament, you better watch out because somebody might upset you, somebody might beat you, and then you lose out on an NCAA tournament bid for being the best team in your conference during the regular season. But I already discussed that, so you know there there's that. Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. But the, yeah. That's pretty much it. There's also a Creighton. L in there. They lost to Xavier. But, but yeah. Um, Big 10, Big 12, really been dominated the discussion the past few weeks. Pretty much the entire season. You know, and that will not that will not change in the video tomorrow because there's going to be some interesting stuff tomorrow. More conference tournaments are starting up this week as well. So we'll talk about those tomorrow. And yeah, yeah, that'll yeah, that'll pretty much do it here. Y'all take care, and I'll see you in about an hour or so. Talk about these FCS games, because there was a lot of games in the FCS that took me by surprise as well. See you in an hour.